Hey guys, I'm Elizabeth McCravey, a website designer and business coach for entrepreneurs and your host for the Breakthrough Brand Podcast, the show that's all about pulling back the curtain on how to actually build a successful business. I don't skim the surface around here. If you want a deep dive into the nitty gritty details of what it takes to run a successful business and stand out in a crowd, you're in the right place. After creating a multiple six figure a year website design business in my 20s, I'm ready to share everything I've learned and everything I'm still learning because I believe the keys to building a thriving business should never be a secret. Here you'll find episodes that are actionable, direct, and fun, like friends chatting business over coffee and a fresh, honest take on the reality of being an entrepreneur. If you're ready to master online marketing, branding, website design, mindset, and business strategy, then this is the podcast for you. It's time to build your breakthrough brand. Let's do this. All right, guys, this interview is an absolute gem. And I've been excited to air it for months now because chatting with Callie is always so much fun. And this conversation is no exception. She's seriously the kind of person who motivates and inspires you without even trying. And I already know that when this airs, I will be re-listening to this one because it's exactly what I need. Um, It was what I needed when we did the interview. It'll be what I need again when this airs. So Callie's already been on the podcast once. So you might remember her back from episode 49, where we talked about you using the Enneagram as business owners and um, different self-care tips with that's a really great episode. And I've actually been on her podcast, Living Enneagram twice now. I'll link to those episodes in the show notes if you want to listen to them. But Callie is an Enneagram coach. She's a podcaster, a YouTuber, a wife, and now a new mama. And we recorded this episode when she was about three months postpartum. So like when she's in the trenches of this, these are not tips from like years ago when she's thinking back on new motherhood, but like the real stuff that she's doing now as a new mom. So whether you're pregnant now, you're trying to conceive or you're a new mom yourself, there's something for you here. And I also want to say if that's not you at all, if kids are like, that's all I could think happening, but you're going through another big life transition, like maybe you're moving getting married, starting a new job, starting your business, whatever, any kind of life transition. There's so much you can apply here that's like non baby related to and you'll like hear me and Kelly say this a few times, but like so much of this stuff applies to your business. So even though we're talking about motherhood stuff, so much of it just applies to business in any regard. So get excited for this one to go ahead and give you a little bit of a scoop on some things you'll hear us talk about. Callie's going to share her experience managing a full business schedule while she was pregnant and growing a baby. I will also share a little bit of my experience doing that right now um, as a pregnant mama with a baby on the way. Uh, Callie shares how she planned her business to prepare for a maternity leave and for um, adding a new person to her life. Uh, Different things she did to mentally prepare for birth and postpartum. Again, that was like, I'm like, I need to listen to this again, because, you know, my my due date's coming up now and I need this advice. Um, She gives tips for actually sleeping as a new parent, how to financially prepare your business for time off, the steps she took to find and hire a nanny, what the day to day looks like now as a new mom versus how it looked when she was just running her business without a kid in the picture. So that's just a little sample. There's so much more though. And seriously, it's good. It's refreshing. It's encouraging. So volume up, get excited. Um, And I'm going to play this interview now with my friend Callie Amons. Okay, so Callie and I have already been chatting, and <laughs> I feel like the, I, I've literally said multiple times to you already, you've got to re say that when we start <laughs> recording. So, Callie, welcome back to the podcast. I'm so oh, excited. I am so excited to be here, Elizabeth. Thanks for having me back on. Yes. Yeah. And guys, Callie was on episode, let's see, episode 49. You were on the first guest I had because it took me a while to even have guests. Um, I felt so honored. So long time, I yeah, honored. Long time. And, and yeah. And I was on your podcast too on, I actually yeah. looked it up a minute ago, episode 63 of Living mm-hmm. in Instagram. So a while back for you as well. And yeah, I'm just, I feel like I could chat with you forever. So to start though, tell everyone who maybe didn't hear the last episode, who you are and what you do in your business. Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Callie Ammons and I'm an Enneagram life coach. So I spend a lot of my time creating courses and coaching people one-on-one to help them figure out their type. But then so much more than that, it's how do you apply the Enneagram to your daily life so that you can thrive in motherhood, family, work, like all the things. So that's what I do. And I absolutely love it. Yes. And you're so good at it. And tell everyone your Enneagram type. 
Let's I'm see. a type three. Yeah. And Elizabeth is a type six. So she was on my podcast and we talked all about that, which is interesting because threes and six have a lot of connections and health and unhealth. Yep. And my husband's a three, which I think we talked about that yeah. on that interview. And what's your wing? I primarily wean to a two, but I've really been working on my four wing, like learning how to exercise that more to become more healthy. But yeah, what is what does Adam wean to? A four. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, that's such like an Enneagram coach thing to say. I've been working on weight yeah. the wing. <laughs> like, that's so funny. But for reals though, it's, it's been good. And yeah, Kramer, my husband is a five and weans to a six. So there were a lot of similarities when you and I were talking. I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. you sound like my husband. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. I love it. Um, yeah. I know this. Okay. So for everyone listening, I mean, this interview is going to be a lot different than what we talked about last time, but it's like such a fun conversation. It's so fun to get to ask you about something that's like a bit outside of like your scope of typical topics. So Callie is a new mom and a first time new mom. And so we're going to talk about all things motherhood as business owners. And so I think for people who are thinking about having children, or if you are a new mom yourself, or if you're just thinking about like transitional periods in life, that this will be a lot of stuff for you. So to start, let's talk about, tell us about your baby boy and like the context of how long it's been since he was born, all of that stuff. Yeah. So his name is Fletch Armani Ammons. Um, we struggled coming up with a boy name. Like, I'm not kidding. We read over 2000 names and I was like, no, no, no. We had tons of girl names picked out. So finally we figured out Fletch Armani and I love it. He's so sweet. He just hit three months. So I'm very much so in the beginning stages. And this is so fun getting to talk about it because it's true. I talk about the Enneagram and teaching that so much, but it's really fun to talk about the business and the behind the scenes and kind of like how you're functioning during a new season like this. Yeah. It's a, like postpartum is no joke, a lot happening there. So yeah. And he was born almost on New Year's Eve, which is cool. Yeah. We were, so he was, his due date was the beginning of January. And we were like, is he going to be a 2020 baby or 2021? And he was born December 30th. So he, he slid right in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't know if I've told you this, but my maiden name is Fletcher. So like really? whenever I saw, yeah, that you named him Fletcher, I was like, oh, that's cool. Because that was my nickname a lot growing up. People call oh me Oh my Fletch. gosh. That is so funny. I had no idea. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I think that's a great name. Yeah. Okay. So first, okay. Give us another context piece for people listening. How long have you had your business? Yeah. So I have been running it full time for a year and a half, but two years up to that, I definitely was working a full-time job and working on building my business before I went full-time, but yeah, year and a half full-time on it. Yep. And you work from home primarily. Yes. Yeah. hundred percent from home. It's, it's great. I have my little home office and it's awesome. It's perfect. Yeah. Okay. So let's take me back. Okay. I want to talk literally about pregnancy and I want yeah. to talk about postpartum and maternity leave. Callie has some interesting maternity leave stuff that we were just talking about beforehand. So to start though, like bring me back to when you first found out you were pregnant and you run a business that like involves you heavily in it, a really yeah. successful, awesome coaching business. How did being pregnant affect the way you're running your business. Yeah. So I feel like this is interesting for context too. My husband is also an entrepreneur, so works full-time for himself as well, which by the way, for entrepreneurs listening to this, I feel like insurance is something that freaks people out. And I actually want to give this tip because this was like so helpful. There's like so many Christian insurances and we use Samaritan ministries and they have covered like everything for the birth. And I, I just talked to so many people that are like literally scared to go full-time on business because of insurance. And I'm like, do not let that keep you from taking action. So there's options out there. Like we're both self-employed and we figured it out and it was awesome. But so you're anyways. with Samaritan insurance. What's yours is called? Yeah. Samaritan okay. ministries. Yeah. yeah. See, I'm with Christian healthcare ministry. So I think okay. it's really similar. Cause we also had that cause Adam went back to school last year. So we don't have like employer insurance either. Yeah, that's awesome. And they've been so great. So helpful. Like, oh, I just, I don't ever want people to like not go full-time on a business if they should out of like fear of that. So anyways, yeah, side tip. That's great tip. But yeah, so I, I got pregnant. We found out actually when I was nine weeks pregnant, cause I, <laughs> it was kind of a shocker. I was just like, oh my gosh, wow, this is crazy. But it was super exciting. And 
honestly, Elizabeth, the biggest thing that like shifted for me. So as a type three, I am a go-getter. I love having a full schedule, which can sometimes be a weakness. And when I found out I was pregnant, it really made me take a step back with my business to be like, how many hours am I working a day? What type of work am I doing that truly is like coming back to my business financially, but also an impact? And what things am I just doing because I feel like I have to do? (laughs) And is there anything I need to release? And so pregnancy helped me like look at my business from a whole new lens that was so healthy. Like I feel like I let so many things die within my business in 2020. Um, I think, so when I was pregnant, I'm pretty sure I had 23 clients, one-on-one coaching clients at that time. Ridiculous. I was like, I need to lighten my load. This is just a lot. So things like that really helped me, um, just think of my business in a more strategic way and releasing releasing things that were taking a lot of my time because I'm like, when I have a baby, like we're going to have to free up this schedule. Yeah. So that was huge for me. And I feel like, so you asked what was back when I first got pregnant, what happened or what was my perspective? You can bring your question. No, I mean that, well, you're answering already. I mean, I feel like you're literally are saying stuff like I've said already myself, but of just that there is that perspective change because you're like, okay, I have to think that my business is going to change at the very least when the baby's first born, but also like longer term than that. And yeah, you have let things go. That's crazy though, 23 clients. So were you just like on calls? I know we, we've talked about this once of like when we were doing our little mastermind call, but like, yeah. were you on calls just all day? Like how did that work? Yeah, I would have like three days a week where I pretty much would be on calls like eight hours a day, which was, I mean, it was exhausting. Like now I know my capacity, like three to four I can do with excellence, but past that, I just feel so tired. And being pregnant, my energy level was starting to go down. I mean, my body's building a baby. And so I was like, oh my gosh, I have to start releasing some of these things. So yeah, it was, it was a lot. I had a very full schedule. I also had an incredible team at that time helping me just run everything else so that I could just be, can you hear my baby crying right now? <laughs> I'm so sorry. We no, have you need here. to go. She's, okay. No, she's well, with We need to talk He's, about that too. Okay. Yeah. Keep yeah going I know there's so many things. Yeah. Um, she's with them. They're good. But yeah. So anyways, I just had to let a lot of things die. And I think that was the biggest thing was just recognizing even when I was pregnant, like I can't do it all. Like my energy is starting to die down and I have to listen to my body and sleep 10 hours this night if I need to, because that's what's best for me. And that was kind of hard as a type three with my little to-do list to start like releasing things, but it's been so healthy and good for me. Yeah. And I can, I can see that. And I, I know like we, like you said with this type six, you can unhealthily go towards a three. I can relate to the three heavily with how I run my business. So I can feel that of like, always having a big to-do list and then also feeling like letting some of that go. Um, With your team, what does your team look like? Like, and when you were pregnant? Yeah. So when I was pregnant, I actually had two members and that was one of the things I ended up um, just dropping to one person once I had my baby because I felt like that was best. And we were, I basically had so many things going like a blog and I want to be so careful when I like give what I'm doing in my business don't ever like take this or even what Elizabeth says. I was like, Oh, I have to do this. Like I stopped blogging, but for some people you should keep blogging. But for me, I just wasn't seeing like actual results for doing that for years and years. And I had someone who was like helping me write and post. And so I let that position go. And there was some other writing work she was doing, but I have an assistant that pretty much helps me with all things like editing, design, um, graphics for social media, helping me organize things. She like edits all my work. And really helps me like organize my um, course creation and like managing members within my courses. So that way I don't have to do it all. But that is huge. Like I cannot imagine like running my business by myself at this point with having a kid just at the level that it's at. It would have been super hard. And my husband actually helps me a lot in my business too, as I help him in his. So what does he do in your business? He helps me a lot with the videography and editing. Yeah. He's incredible at it. He's super good. (laughs) And your podcast setup like looks so nice and fancy right now. Even (laughs) you can tell you're into YouTube right now. Like I was, when you said that, I was like, Oh yeah. Like you are very set up for that. Um, I love that. Okay. So anything else you feel like, which was changing particularly between finding out you were pregnant and Fletch coming into the world? Yeah. I feel like emotionally preparing myself. So this is some work that I really tried to do before having a baby. And actually before getting pregnant, I would look at a lot of my friends who had babies and just kind of look through the lens of problem solving where it's like, what are common issues that women struggle with after having a kid? 
What about business owners specifically? And I know it's not going to be a perfect world, but I love problem solving and just looking at like, is there anything Kramer and I can do ahead of time to prepare? So even like physically, like I learned a lot about just taking care of my body while I was pregnant, like how to avoid sickness, how to stay active when I didn't feel like it so that I could recover better. Just so many little things like that. And that I think helped me so much be able to keep working throughout my pregnancy and really be like healthy. Like I was, I was shocked at how smooth my pregnancy went, but I think it's because of a lot of that prep work of just like preparing and researching um, and applying and executing what I could. I had incredible mentors just like helping me an incredible doctor who was able to educate me when things fall off. But that helped prepare for Fletch coming, I think from a practical standpoint, and then giving myself space to just emotionally like figure it out. Like it's so interesting how it's awesome that you have a baby inside of you, but it still doesn't feel real. And I know you said this, Elizabeth, like when you found out the gender, like it made it feel a little bit more real and same for me. And then it's like, okay, as I was getting bigger and bigger, I'm like, it's starting to become real. And then when he was born, your emotions sometimes just take a while to catch up to what's actually happening though. And giving myself time and space. And I I mean like literally in my days, like time to journal, time to just go on a walk and process was so good for me for, from like a personal standpoint, but also as a business owner, I think if I just would have kept my full schedule and kept going and going, I think I really would have struggled with some massive emotions I never would have dealt with if I didn't just like sit with it. Yes. I'm with you on the journaling and walks and breaks like that. I feel like that's been mm-hmm. really good for me so far. And I love that advice of paying attention to like your physical health, and emotion, emotional health and all of that. What were you doing for workouts while you were pregnant? And that's kind of random, but I'm curious. Yeah. So in the beginning, like until I really didn't start showing till I was like 23, 24 weeks. So up until that point, I was pretty much just doing like cardio every single day, whatever I felt like running, walking, stair stepper. And, uh, we just moved to Colorado that past summer when I was pregnant. So we were like going out and hiking a lot and then I would still do weightlifting. I would just check in with my doctor and make sure like I was safe with what I was doing, but I really listened to my body and I'm like, what do I feel like doing today? And the days I didn't feel like exercising, I'm like, just go walk. Like that's your goal. Just keep moving. But as I like got to the end, like nine months, eight months, I was just walking pretty much and literally like curling like three, five pound dumbbells. (laughs) It was very minimal, but it was good. It felt so good to still just move and stretch. Yeah. I thought it makes you feel more like yourself. Oh yeah. Um, That's such a crazy thing though. Like I found since being pregnant is like, there's so much different advice about exercise. Like some stuff you read and it's like, don't ever like once you're past this certain week, you can't do anything. But then it's like, that's what my midwife has said is just like, listen to your body. And so I was doing burpees and stuff like that yeah. for a while. And now I'm like, okay, I actually don't feel like comfortable doing that. Cause I feel like I'm going to yeah. shake too much sort of, but exactly. Yeah. It's very like intuitive process. Yes. That's a perfect word. It really is. Cause everyone's body is so different. So like maybe someone who gave the advice of like, don't work out past this point. Well, maybe they didn't work out before, like didn't have a lifestyle to exercise. And yeah, that would not be smart to do that. I wouldn't think during pregnancy, but no, I worked out until literally the night before I had him. I had just gone on like a two and a half mile hike and it felt amazing. And I think it helped put me into labor, like continuing to stay active and everything. So you're inspiring me with that. I'm about to, I'm planning <laughs> yeah. to actually work out after this interview. So I'm like, <laughs> give me the motivation I need to when like, we were, go. <laughs> yeah. Keep going. When we were at like 38 weeks, cause I had him right at 38 weeks the day before I was like doing squats and my husband's like, Oh my gosh, he's going to fall out. I'm like, no, he's not. <laughs> it's like, it's fine. Yeah, it really does. I can see how it would feel that way though. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Let's talk about, okay. But let's talk about maternity leave stuff. Yeah. So like, I, I want you to, I guess, start with telling people what you told me about how you ended up doing this a bit differently than like you felt like traditional advice said to Totally. So, I mean, the same way we were just talking about exercise with our intuition, I started to apply that with maternity leave. So I was talking with my husband, like, okay, do I take a leave? How long? What should it be? Because you just kind of feel like you have to do that because that's what everyone does, right? But as we were talking about it, 
I like felt sad about it, like literally depressed where I was like, I, I actually don't want to take a leave. It stresses me out to think about having like a coaching call the next day after giving birth or having to like record podcast episodes. So like, I'm not going to do that. But we started messing with the idea of like, what if I didn't take a maternity leave or what if I had the freedom or flexibility to work if I wanted to, but also be far enough ahead that like, I don't have to return back to work. And I did that because I really think it's important to feel like yourself as much as you can when you're going through like a massive transition. So even like if you're getting married in life or you're having a big move, things just feel weird when you're kind of out of your routine. And I knew that having a baby is going to be weird. Like going, going out of my home and then coming home one day back with a little child, like that is just a wild experience. And so I was thinking through like for myself, for Callie, what makes me feel like myself exercise does. And I knew like, I wouldn't be able to do that right after giving birth, doing like my hair and makeup, basic things like that, being able to work, even if I'm just like recording a podcast or writing a fun piece of content, those things make me feel like me. And I'm so excited to add like a new role of being a mom. But I thought through like, how do I, how do I feel like myself still? And so that was the decision we made was I'm going to be scheduled out at least two months and not have like meetings or obligations or podcast episodes where I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to record something. But we said that as soon as I feel like I have energy or it sounds exciting to do some work, like I have that freedom to do that. And I had um, at the time a membership right after I had Fletch and I had planned recordings that I could like publish it, but I would teach live um, before I had the baby. Anyways, five days after having him, I literally had the energy. I felt amazing. My parents were in town spending time with Fletch just like in our basement. And I was like, I feel so inspired to like teach tonight. And I'm actually not going to play the recording I have pre-recorded and I'm going to show up live. And it was the most life-giving thing. People were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're here. But it was so fun. It filled my soul. I was exhausted after it. But I, what I was telling Elizabeth before we hit record is I think it's just so important to be in tune with yourself and to know what you need. So sometimes we can just hear these rules in life and feel like, oh, I have to take a maternity leave or I have to return back to work um, after six weeks. It's like, do what's best for you and for your family. If you need to take four months off, six months off, like do it. If you need to take five days off, do that. Like listen to what you need and do what's best for you guys. And I think creating that flexibility and the fact that we have that option as business owners is just an incredible blessing. So yeah, I taught the live. I recorded a podcast episode like a week after because I felt inspired. Um, but it was very like splotchy, like an hour here, two hours there. It wasn't like I was, you know, doing eight hours, five days a week. I mean, I don't even do that right now. So it was just yeah. what I felt like doing. See, I love that. And that's so, and it's so interesting because it's, it's fun to me. Cause when I originally asked you like, please come on my podcast, like, let's talk about pregnancy and, um, having and babies and new motherhood stuff. I like, I kind of assumed you took like a more traditional maternity leave. Um, but I like, I don't know. It just, it, it, I couldn't really tell. And I knew you yeah. were still showing up on online at the same yeah. time, but uh, you know, like you said, it can be so much like pre recorded stuff. So to clarify, you said you like planned two months worth. So would that be like January and February or was it like, cause we like, guys, he came on December 30th. Yeah. So yeah. So, okay. This is also interesting. My assistant who works with me, she was due two weeks after me. So oh I, yeah, I was like, we have a lot of like back in like August, we were like busting out a ton of work. Cause I'm yeah. like, we got to prep for this. Um, but yeah, I had through February, like with my podcast, my YouTube channel, um, and my clients knew I would return back to February or earlier if I wanted to. And at that point I only had four clients. So I dropped drastically and my it's every other week is how I do coaching calls with my clients. So it wasn't like I was talking every single week. And then there was some other like social media content I had planned through March, just to like give myself space. Cause I also had no idea how the birth was going to go. Like if something would have, you know, been harder than I would have expected, I wanted to give myself that space to recover and not feel like I was trying to rush back to work. But I mean, I had an amazing birth experience and so blessed with how it went. Interrupting this episode with a suggestion for the small business owners listening. 
Ever wonder what you should do for healthcare when you and your spouse are both self-employed so there's no work-provided health insurance to participate in? Well, when my husband Adam joined me in the entrepreneurial job space over four years ago, we joined Christian Healthcare Ministries instead of getting traditional health insurance. And it was the best decision for us, especially in these years of growing and raising a family while also running multiple businesses. CHM is a health cost sharing ministry and is a faith based alternative to health insurance. We did tons of research before choosing CHM. And if you know me and Adam, you know we are all about doing the math when making big or small financial decisions. And even though it's not insurance, CHM shares 100% of eligible medical bills, which is more than the typical 70 or 80% of medical bills paid for by insurance companies. All sharing is determined by the CHM guidelines, which you can check out before and after joining. And for the mamas and mamas to be listening, you truly cannot find a better healthcare option for maternity care. I had a vaginal delivery and a C-section and birth center care and hospital care between my two pregnancies and births, and it was all 100% shared for. And outside of birth, we've had our share of emergency room visits and procedures as a family, and those costs were all shared by members at Christian Healthcare Ministries, leaving us only paying our monthly contribution. CHM is less expensive month-to-month than insurance, and because there's no network, you can choose your care with whichever providers best fit your family. I seriously just cannot recommend Christian Healthcare Ministries enough. You've got to check them out. Go to elizabethmccravey.com slash CHM for more information. Also putting that link in the show notes, Elizabeth with McCravey.com slash CHM. Now back to the episode. Yeah. And I want to talk about that too. So there's so many things I want to talk about. So I want, I want to put a pause on that part though, to keep talking about maternity leave stuff. So I love the question you said of like, and you're such a good coach is really a part of this. Like, I feel like you're like coaching me even as we talk about this, but what makes me feel like myself? Like that's such a great question to ask in all situations. Um, But especially I get it with this big life transition of like doing, doing things that make, make you feel like more normal in that like postpartum period. What other stuff, like, is there other things that you feel like you've done that have helped um, in the transition? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, okay. (laughs) I, I just want to say like, as I share what I've done, I really believe like, God isn't up there like thinking like, oh my gosh, Elizabeth, like didn't take a maternity leave or she did like, there's so much freedom as individuals and in Christ. And so I just, again, want to be so careful as I share like our experience and what we chose. I don't judge you if, you know, anyone listening chooses something different, like you have to do what's best for you and your family. So another common problem I saw is like women just don't get sleep. And there is a fact to that when you have a newborn, like they're waking up every two hours because their stomachs are so small. So they have to eat. But we looked at how can Callie get sleep and how can Kramer get sleep the best we can and help Fletch get sleep so that we're all thriving. Because if I'm on fumes, like that's, you literally equal like a drunk person when you don't have sleep and it's really hard to function. It's harder for your body to recover. So sleep was like a huge thing we prioritized and we live in Colorado. We don't have any family here. So we knew like it's the two of us. So there were things like very practical. We made three months worth of dinners, like crock pot meals that I knew I could just like pop in. We, um, decided to have me pump if I had the supply, which I did. So I just would pump and then Kramer would help me feed Fletch in the night. So in the beginning we would alternate nights. He would take Fletch one night. I would take him one night. So both of us were getting really long stretches of sleep so that we could do that, but he was still getting breast milk. That was what we wanted to do if we could. Um, we, this is kind of crazy, but this is what we decided. We moved Fletch to his own room when he was two weeks old. And that's because we felt like for him having his own space, like babies are noisy. And so he like got in this great sleeping rhythm, put him down in his crib. He's very close to our room. We have a monitor where we could hear him, but we all started sleeping so much better. So Again, like you, and we, we didn't say like at two weeks, we're moving Fletch to his room. We had just said he'll sleep with us until we feel comfortable. Like there's no way I'm putting him in his room. If I'm like having anxiety attacks, like I'm not going to sleep. So until we felt comfortable and he was sleeping great, we really figured out kind of like his little rhythm, his sounds that he would make. And it just, that helped us so much. So those are some like really, really practical things. But again, you have to do what's best for you and your family. We had just looked at like, how can we prioritize sleep? taking advantage of his nap times. But that I think was game changer and their bodies changed so fast. So like he went from waking up every two hours in the night to now he's three months old and he's sleeping like nine to 10 hours straight in the night, which is 
it's amazing. Is that like normal at that age or is that um, more, I don't know anything about, I've still like, I haven't learned about babies. Yeah, no, I, gosh, I didn't know either. I, so we hired a sleep coach, Becca Campbell's her name. Yeah, I listened to her podcast. Yeah. She has a newborn course. Honestly, Elizabeth, if you want it, like I will gift it and buy it for you. Like it, that has been game changer where like babies from like zero to four months, their, their sleep is so random and sporadic. So I think it does depend on the kid, but there's things you can do to help support them. And he has just like, he knows his rhythms. He understands like after he has a bath every night, like it's nighttime, he has his bottle and he goes down. So yeah, he, I think the biggest thing is like, as their stomachs are getting bigger, they can hold more milk versus like when they're so small, they just have to eat every two hours, then three, then four, then five, then six. So yeah. he's at about 10 hours. And when he's four to five months, Becca says he should be able to sleep 12 hours through the night, which he's on trend for that. So it's That's amazing. Awesome. But that like sleep, I care so much about sleep. Like I am a better wife. I'm a better business owner. My workouts are better. Like I really value sleep as a human. And so I knew that had to be a top focus for me. Um, I know that was a lot of information, but those are some practical things we just did where it was like, how can we problem solve this and do what's best for our family so that we, we feel great. Uh, yeah, I love how practical everything you just shared was. I literally wrote down notes. Um, yeah, with Becca, are you working with her through the course or through like one-on-one sleep coaching or sleep yeah, consulting? So she, yeah, so she has a course that I did buy, but then she also has a membership program where if okay. you're in it, you get consulting or can ask her questions. So I'm also mm-hmm. a part of that. That's I smart. just love information. Like I love having people who know what they're talking about. I don't really want to like dig through all the YouTube videos. I'm like, I will pay you to just like tell me this step-by-step yes. process. Well, and I've, I don't know if, did you have a doula at your birth? I don't think you did, right? Or did you? We started to, and then we fired her and I'm so glad we did, but I think oh. doulas are amazing. So we didn't. And I don't know how things are with you guys with COVID, but I could only have one person in there, they were like debating if they could have a, if we could have a doula or not. And I'm like, I'm totally having Kramer in there. Like I'm not swapping him out. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think hospitals here are still only letting one person, but the birth center will let you have a doula and a significant other. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah. We, th- there's a lot of postpartum doulas too. So that's something we've looked into of yes. having like a person, uh, with you in the, like house, so to speak, to help with some of that. But, um, I love the crock pot stuff, like taking turns on feeding baby, um, own room. I think all those are amazing and practical tips. Yeah. It's like, I think for all of us, like anyone listening, it's like, if you can just take a problem solving mindset when it comes to anything in life that you're feeling stuck. So instead of being like, Oh, it's just motherhood. Like I have to be exhausted all the time. It's like, yeah, of course you're going to be a little tired, but like, is that true? And what can I do with, anything within my own ability to like change the situation. And I think when you have that mindset toward everything, like you just figure it out where it's like anything that's not working and we keep doing that with him. It's like anything that's not flowing. What do we need to change? What do we need to do? We just switched gyms actually, because the gym we were going to didn't have childcare and we Kramer and I didn't like using um, our nanny time to go to the gym or Kramer and I going separate. We really value going at the same time. So we were like, well, let's just problem solve this, switch gyms, find a gym that we really trust the childcare. We get to know the staff there. We feel safe with it. And we just started taking Fletch and he's like loving it. Like he literally doesn't want to leave. He like loves the staff there. We get to get our workout done and it feels so good. And we just go as a family. And as he gets older, he gets to work out there too. So I just think if you can have this open mind, like problem solve and figure out what you can change. Yeah. Not the victim mentality of it all. Exactly. Uh, that's great advice on the gym thing too. Our gym does childcare and people awesome. seem to really love it. So that's good to know that that's like helpful to have. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Another question, this kind of goes back to maternity leave time. I know. So you, you would plan the content, but you were still like, okay, I'm going to work if I feel up for it. What did your business look like from like a booking people and like, even like a revenue perspective, like not with specific numbers, but just like, how did that look when you weren't like, Hey, this is all I'm focused on right now. Yeah. That is such a good question. Okay. So 
I really believe in like the power of having like reserves, like cash, like savings. And so like I run my business from a place of like being at least six months out where I can cover like my pay, my assistance pay, um, just making sure things can operate. I mean, even seeing like COVID happen, like being prepared for just emergencies that can happen in life. So that's how I have ran my business. And then knowing I was having a baby, just like planned just a big cushion of cash. But I did currently have, I think it was four to five clients. I'm pretty sure I had four clients when I had him and those clients were still paying. I just like shifted, like when our calls were going to be. And then I have like courses that are generating for me behind the scenes. So I still had income coming in, but I just knew my income that was coming in is definitely covering everything I need. I also have my position of savings. I'm good for like six months plus. And when I feel ready, I can start like pushing for coaching. And I actually just decided to sign like a few more clients just a few weeks ago. Cause I like finally felt like it. And that was the first time I put it out there and took on new clients. So that's, again, I like, I really care about security in life. So I'm like constantly thinking in the future, I'm like, how do I set myself up for success? Because no one likes operating out of like stress or feeling like I have to work or I have to sign more clients. I don't do my best work when I'm operating from that place either. And so that's what I did. And gosh, I also have just been challenged of like having an abundance mindset where it's like, I've done the work, I've built my business to the point it needs to be. And like believing that like, God's going to bring the right people to my membership, to my courses, the next right clients when the timing's right. And he's going to guide me in my energy and in my recovery when I need to have um, new clients and sign people. So that's, did that answer it? Was that practical yeah. enough? Yeah. No, it's practical. And I love the spiritual aspect, all of it. Yeah. And six months cushion, like that's, that's smart. Just like you said, even with COVID and just outside of having a child, but being mm -hmm. able to to cushion that. Yeah. So your assistant, was she still working then during those months? Yeah. So she actually wanted to take a traditional maternity leave, which is great. Okay. Like I wanted to give that to her. So she, it was the last week of January is when her maternity leave started, which by that point I was like, I'm feeling amazing. Like I really jumped back into work at that point, but she had worked so much in advance, like all the tasks she does for me, like with the podcast, with social media, like she pretty much had all of her work done through March and she took a good five, no, four weeks off. And I told her like, if you need more time, let me know. But if you're like, Hey, I want work. I'm like ready to jump back in, then I'll have work for you. And so she ended up wanting more work and has slowly eased back into it as she's adjusting. That's cool. And so I guess, is she like a contractor position or part-time or so it's not like a paid she's a contractor. Leave? Okay. Yes. See, yep. have, that's like confusing sometimes too, of like as online business owners, like, do we do like paid maternity leaves and things like yeah. that? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I think like if I, I think it would be so cool. Like I love being generous, right? Like it's just yeah. so fun to be generous. I think it would be amazing to get to that point where I just, I'm very passionate about hiring people. So continuing to build my team and continuing to actually like give benefits in that way. That's a goal for me for sure. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. So all the like, since it's not like so formalized form of like team in a lot of senses it can feel confusing in that way and it's crazy that y'all both were having babies at the same time i feel like that would be like that would feel like very intense to me if one of my team members was also having a baby right now it it was interesting because there were times like she felt really sick or you know she would just be like hey like i am like struggling today and i'm like that's okay like go rest like it was interesting but it also was fun like being able to talk about it and go through that same season together yeah that's really cool. Okay. So another question I want to ask you about, I know you kind of already mentioned a little bit, but childcare, how yes. did y'all decide on that? Like how early in the process did you find a nanny? How'd you pick one? And what does that look like in y'all's day-to-day working life now? Yeah. Okay. So I mentioned like we live in Colorado, no family here. So we were like, we for sure want help for the sake of our marriage, for the sake of being able to run our businesses. And we want our child to be comfortable around other people and not have like attachment issues to us. Of course, sometimes I feel like that sounds so cold. Of course we want him to love his parents and be comfortable with us, but just, I mean, anxiety separation is like a real thing. So I'm like, how do we help him like be around other people when he's not going to naturally see family very often? So we're like, we had planned on hiring a nanny before we ever got pregnant. Like I'm, this was something that was hard for me to admit Elizabeth, but I 
really struggle with just like babysitting or enjoying like hanging out with kids all the time. Like I have always like loved kids and I can hang out with them for a few hours, but then I'm kind of like, okay, bye. Like I'm done. And so I was worried about that being a mom where I was like, if I'm a full-time stay at home mom, like I, like, I do not think that aligns with my gifts. That doesn't sound fun. It sounds miserable to me. I love kids, but it's just, no. And praise the Lord. Like it has been so fun, like hanging out with Fletch. Like I genuinely love it, but I knew that having someone else help me watch him was going to be massive. Like I, I knew that was good for like my mental health. So we had planned on that before ever having a kid. And then when we got pregnant, it was like, okay, let's just kind of figure out, like, we want to learn him, learn his routines, how he eats, how to like live with a baby before we hire someone, but we'll just feel into it. And when we're ready to look for someone, we will. So we hired our nanny, her name's Kira, right when he was nine weeks old. And that was because we had both started easing back into work and it was hard. Like, I mean, he's so sweet, but like he would cry, but he needs help. And so I'd be in the middle of recording a podcast and have to step away and like, gosh, they're just so sweet. Like you're not frustrated at them, but it was true that like a task that would take me usually like 30 minutes was taking me like three hours to get done. And I'm like, this is not efficient for any of us. And I, I really like being present with Fletch. I don't enjoy trying to like work on my computer while being with him. It's like, if I'm with him, I just want to be with him. If I'm working, I just want to get in my zone. So Kramer and I just talked about it and we're like, this is getting really hard and we're really understanding Fletch and his rhythms. Let's go ahead and look for a nanny. So I used um, care.com and also Sitter City. Sitter City is where I found our nanny. And I just put up a job description in the way that like I do with my business of being like very specific of the person I'm trying to attract to me. And I really want to propel the people who like don't resonate with what I'm saying. So I like, I take seriously who's going to watch my kids. So I talked about their faith. I want them to have similar faith to us. I care about like the words they speak over our kid. What is their energy? Like if they're negative, like I don't want you in my house, like you, a baby feels that energy. So I was just really picky. We had several applications. I went through multiple interviews. So Kira, who we ended up hiring, I think I went through four interviews with her and I felt great about her in my gut, but we went to dinner with her and her husband. I did coffee with her by just the two of us. I talked to her on the phone Then my husband interviewed her. Then I saw how she interacted with Fletch and she's been amazing. So she works for us Monday through Friday, seven hours a day, and then Friday nights as well for okay. date night. Wow. So she, awesome. yeah, I don't do it all. She's helping me a ton and she is such a positive influence on Fletch. And I love it because it's like, she comes in with high energy, like so great with him. And then like when I'm done working, like I'm so excited to be with him. So is Kramer. And I just feel like he's constantly having people around him that are focused on him. They're patient with him. We have high energy because we're like rotating shifts basically (laughs) instead of doing it like 24 seven. So it's been amazing for us. Oh, I I feel like I'm literally gonna have to re-listen to this episode to like (laughs) take better notes on everything you're saying because that's, that's so helpful. And all the, yeah, all the thoughts on you can treat the job application like you would a business thing. But I know you know this, but I nannied when I was like starting my business. And so I got jobs from care.com actually. And I was that person being interviewed a bunch of times and filling out the application. So it'll be interesting to like be in the reverse role of that. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, that is crazy having no family, which is such a like nearby, which we, we will be similar in that regard. Not as yeah. distant uh, as not as far away as you've been, but mm-hmm. yeah. So, okay. So during the, that time when the nanny's around, are they at home with you and you're just like, y'all are in your offices? How's that look? Yeah. So yeah. So like literally you guys heard Clutch crying a little bit ago. So she's with him. So she comes to our house and that was something like I wanted someone in our home, especially with a newborn, like him, you know, nine weeks old. I'm like, we still need to navigate things. So she's here. We have a pretty um, big spacious house. So like Kramer has like his entire basement where is like his office, basically his warehouse. Cause he sells like physical products. And then we have a main level and then a uh, up upstairs and that's my office is on the highest level. So our nanny's usually on the main level with Fletch, but we see her. And that was another big theme with the interview process is like finding someone that like we also click with personality wise, like Kramer is the type five can be very burned out by people. So like if we're around someone that's like talking all the time and just like a little too much, like that would exhaust him and drain him. So we were really looking for a person that we meshed with as well. That was like, can they be in our home? And she's 
so amazing. Like, I'm just so blessed that like the Lord, like literally like brought her to us, but she, her energy is so great. Like she knows when to talk to us, when to give us space. Um, she's so helpful. Like she helps me with laundry. She, she helps me keep things clean. Like my house looking amazing. And like when Fletch is napping. And so she's great. And we tell her like, work on your computer, like do whatever you want when he's sleeping. Like we really don't care. We just like having someone here. That's like a hundred percent focused on Fletch when he needs it. And so she's amazing. Like, I feel like she's a friend. Um, she's great. She's kind of like an ideal client to me as well. So I'm always asking her like business questions where I'm like, Hey, I have more questions for you. Um, so yeah, it's been, it has been really great, but she's in our home. Okay. That's awesome. Did you ask her Enneagram type when you interviewed her? I did. Yeah. And that was actually one thing we really, so she's a type six actually. Oh, and that was something. Type sixes are great at taking care of people. You guys are amazing. Yeah. She's She's truly so amazing. I had like told her my career and she was like, no way, you're an Enneagram coach. But it was great to have that connection point because then we could talk about like her strengths and weaknesses and also for her to understand me and Kramer better because she knew about the Enneagram too. So it's been amazing. That's awesome. I'm yeah, I'm grateful too. That's such a blessing that y'all found someone you love so much. Um, totally. Yeah. And they, being a nanny is such a like, such an important job. Like I feel like I didn't even realize the gravity of the job when I did it until now, because now as I think about finding help for childcare, it's like, yeah, like that was a really big deal and very important role. Um, So important. I mean, you're literally influencing someone's child. Like they're watching what you're doing and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Another question I have for you, because you all, another thing you kind of brought up and you told me even before we started recording, but your birth experience, I'd love to know just like a little bit about like, I know you said it was a very like positive experience for you. Like just yeah. tell us a little bit about what it was like. Yeah, it was, it seriously was so awesome. So Kramer and I moved here in Colorado in July. And so I transitioned doctors. I think I was like 17 weeks pregnant at that point. And I was really nervous about it where I'm like, how do I, like, I don't know anyone here. How do I find someone that I trust? But I found an amazing doctor that's like two minutes from our house. I love her whole team. And they're just so great. Like the way they handle everything. They're so professional where it's like, if something seemed off with my pregnancy, they never freaked out. It was just really calm. So like the birth experience itself was so chill. Like it was Kramer and I were literally in there like playing chess. Okay. We're playing a game (laughs) and we're like waiting for me to like get to the point to start pushing. And I'm like, for the first time ever in my life about to beat them. And they walk in, they're like, okay, Kelly, it's time to start pushing. I'm like, no, like I got to finish this game. But I chose to get an epidural and I'm really happy that I personally did. Again, I, everyone has to make the decision that's best for them. And I think natural birth epidurals, like all of it can be incredible. But I, I have a high pain tolerance, but I really told Kramer, like I didn't want to go through the birth and like see if I could handle it or push my body in that way. I really wanted to just enjoy it and not um, <laughs> be traumatized by the pain of it. And so that's what we chose. And so I got an epidural early enough that that morning I had actually had an appointment and two weeks prior, they kept saying like, wow, your body's progressing so much. Like you're going to have him within a week or two. So like we knew it was coming night before I was having contractions like every three to five minutes, but they weren't painful enough to like go in. So at my appointment, they're like, yeah, you're, you're having him today. Go home, get your bag, come back. So I was so happy that literally the doctor told me that. Cause I kept just being like, how am I supposed to know when to go to the hospital? Like I feel these contractions, but I'm not really in pain. Yeah. So I was so happy that she's like, yes, come in. So I got the epidural very early where like your legs go numb. But then after like an hour, I could feel them again and I could move. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's interesting. Cause you can like feel during the birth to, enough to like be able to push, but it really takes off like the edge of the pain. So yeah. Anyways, yeah, they came in. They're like, time to start pushing. Within two hours, he was out. He did awesome. I I describe it like it just felt like a really intense workout where it's like you're pushing really hard, but I mean, it felt like a good workout. I was just like, dang, I got, I did that. That was awesome. And he was so sweet. It was kind of weird. I think emotionally was the hardest thing for me where it was like seeing him out. I'm just like, oh my gosh, like you're my child. Like you just came out of me. That's crazy. And I just, this was another thing that I prepared ahead of time where it was like, I had my worship playlist. I had my essential oils. I had my journal and I knew things were going to feel out of whack. And I just kept telling myself like, it's okay to feel this and you don't have to trust your emotions. Like just keep doing what you can keep getting to know Fletch, keep talking to Kramer things feel weird. And I think that really helped me, but like the whole staff at the hospital was amazing. They took really good care of us and Fletch. And then we got to leave, I think like two days later, he, so he was born at 38 weeks and there was like, he was kind of small and 
his temperature was like going up and down quite a bit. So they just wanted to regulate him to make sure he was fine. And he was, but yeah, that's like, that's how the experience went. It was really good. Um, I almost think like postpartum, like how my body felt after was harder than the birth itself. That probably was just more shocking where I didn't do as much research or preparation of like, wow, like it hurts to walk and there's some things I could have done better ahead of time, but it was, it was good after a few days. Yeah. And that's, yeah, people don't talk enough about a lot of that postpartum stuff. Um, I feel like I'm learning that, like, as I'm starting to learn a little bit of just like, it's not, you people talk more about birth. Um, Oh yeah. I was going to say, it reminds me of a wedding where it's like, people have so much hype about like the wedding, but then it's like, well, let's prepare for like the marriage. Cause you're going to be with this person. And I felt like that with birth, it's like all this hype about the birth experience and what are you doing? And it just lasts for a day or less. And then it's like, okay, now we have this child. Now we have to recover. But yeah, I think like postpartum, um, the biggest thing is like, okay, you, have you heard of pad sickles? You need to look. Yes. Them up. Okay. <laughs> I had a million of those and those were game changer, Elizabeth. I put like my essential oils in them and everything, but just like letting my body heal and really focusing on that. I started to like up the self care where it was like, I literally would take like three baths a day to like help my body recover faster. That was another thing Kramer and I planned in where he was like, I'm just gonna make myself available so you can keep recovering. Cause it, that's the hardest thing is like, you know, physically, if it hurts to walk and everyone's experience is different, but like, I definitely had some recovery just like the first few weeks. And I'm like, I can't clean my house right now, or I can't walk quickly to go get our child. And I I need to be patient with myself. But yeah, I think like one other thing with like prepping for birth, I actually have a YouTube video about this where I talk more in depth. If any of you listening are interested in like diving deep into this, but I really believe in the power of our mind. And so I had created self-talk just on like a voice memo app on my phone, my whole pregnancy where I would talk about how the birth went. And I'm not saying like it always is going to happen like exactly this way, but what I was doing was trying to control what I could control in my mind because I can get anxious about situations I don't have control over. And so I was like, Lord, I'm going to take control of my mind and like speak into existence what I believe can happen. But I'm also going to trust you. Like if something doesn't go the way I plan, but I would just speak things like the birth goes incredible. Fletch comes out exactly the way he needs to. I stay calm. My oils calm me. My worship music calms me. I I'm able to talk to my doctor while I'm giving birth. And like all of those things happen. Like it went so great. And I listened to myself talk every single morning during my pregnancy as I'd get ready. And I would speak things over my pregnancy too. But I've had like some traumatic medical experiences growing up, like at a young age, had some really interesting like death experiences with family members where I was around at a young age. So like even hospital smells can make me feel like very anxious. And I just, I really wanted to like overcome the mental battle. That was the biggest thing for me is like this anxiety is coming because of like these mental stories I'm telling myself. So that's part of why I did that and creating the self-talk. But I also did that with postpartum, which is like, I'm in control of my emotions and I know that my emotions are out of whack and I don't always have to trust them. But yeah, I would speak those things into existence and control what I could control. And I think getting sleep and creating the plans we did helped me with recovery so much. Like honestly, Elizabeth, I didn't struggle with depression or anxiety like postpartum. And I know that is very real for women and I don't want to like discredit that, but I, I really think like the whole sleep was probably like one of the biggest components and just like trying to create space to like stay in the word of God, even if it looked different, just like, how do I stay connected? How do I stay connected with who I am? And those, those things really helped me figure out the weird days. There was one day I had like a huge crying breakdown where I'm like, why am I crying? But it's like, okay, you just roll with it and you just keep going and you don't make it a bigger deal than it is. Oh. Okay. You just gave so much great advice and all that. (laughs) I feel like I'm talking so much. Well, I love the self-talk advice and like, I don't know, you, you probably haven't listened to it yet since it was literally yesterday, but the latest episode. Okay. Okay. So I talk about that self-talk idea only I wasn't, I haven't done it the way you're doing it, but now I want to, cause I think that's brilliant to like record yourself saying those things, but something I've done that feels so funny to do, but I think it's been really helpful. I don't know. Cause I haven't given birth yet, but it feels like it will be. I go on, I've gone on walks and tell my birth story, the yes. like just different versions of it, but they're all positive, yes. but I'll make yes. up like, okay, I go into labor at this point and then everything goes like this way and that way. Yep. And just like what you said, telling the story that you are wanting and yep. 
it's been like very therapeutic for me and also shown me how little I know about birth. Cause I'm like, I don't really know what happens. <laughs> yeah. Stuff, but like, here we go. Yeah. And that, okay. A few more things with this. That was something else. Like during the pregnancy, I like did not consume other people's birth stories too much or like content. I never watched births, even like birth classes. I was very cautious of what I consumed because, okay, I'm going to get kind of nerdy, but our subconscious can't tell the difference from a real experience versus a fake one when you visualize it. So that's the power of visualization is you can actually visualize things happening in your mind and our subconscious thinks that's like actually real. And so I would visualize just like going to the hospital. I would visualize like going to my appointments and I protected my mind of watching any other traumatic stories because I didn't want to have those images in my head or that fear. And I, again, everyone's different with like your maturity level. I personally like really struggle to like separate things. Like if I see someone's experience, like it's hard for me to get that out of my head. So I just was protecting my mind in that way. But I think that is so cool that you're doing that and like telling your birth story already because your subconscious is going to think that's true. And in my self-talk, I said, I have Fletch two weeks early. I literally had him at 30 weeks. I, yeah. And I don't want to be like crazy, like woo woo or with the manifestation. Cause not everything is always going to be perfect, but I really, like I spoke those things. I said like my body recovers great after postpartum and I'm in good shape. And like, I've been amazed at like how my body has recovered from the experience. Like it's, and of course I've, you know, you work hard as long as you speak these things out, but it's been amazing. I'm like, God, you're so cool. How through our thoughts, like they're that powerful. It's amazing. Oh my gosh. I love that Callie. Okay. I want to, I have a practical question in relation to that. Cause I'm going to yeah. literally do that after we get off this call. Um, in addition <laughs> to working out and all the other things I'm going to do. Yeah. Now. Um, but what are, are you, what app are you using to record yourself and like replay it? Yeah. Okay. So it's literally, I have an iPhone and it's the voice memo app that like comes with your iPhone. It's black. You can search it. Um, but yes, I guys, I do this with every area of my life, like self-talk with marriage, business, pregnancy, postpartum, like any area you want victory in, like just record yourself as if it's already happened. And I love listening to it. Like while I'm walking, while I'm working out, getting ready, like, it's just so cool to let those things play through my head. That's such great advice. Yeah. So it's like one recording or is it like multiple little ones or is it like one yeah. you did like all together? I had like one pregnancy one. I had one birth one and then I had one for postpartum and then I change them. So like now that he's three months, I've been changing them of like, now that I know his personality better, speaking of like who he's becoming this next year and like how I support him. And I speak as if it's like already happened. So like a quick example would be like, my birth experience went so smooth. Fletch came out at 38 weeks and we worked as a team. It was such an incredible birth experience. I loved it because, and then I just keep going. So it's like, as if it's happened and kind of what you were saying, like you're telling the story of what yeah. happened. Oh, okay. I love that so much. Okay. I'm doing that for sure. And I agree. That, <laughs> I'm like, so excited for you. <laughs> and I do that same sort of stuff with business as well. Yes. So I get how like, it just, it's another, like, this is a huge life event and yep. you can apply business principles that you use as well to it. Okay. Exactly. I literally, like we said before we started, I feel like I could chat with you for a thousand hours and I wish we <laughs> lived in the same city so we could just hang out. Um, no. But to close, I want to ask you some rapid fire questions yeah. and then tell everyone how they can hang out with you. These are like going to be some, some pregnancy, some business, but first question would be favorite pregnancy, like must have pregnancy product for when you're pregnant. Okay. I had this cream called mom bomb that I'd put on my stomach and I loved it because you kind of get itchy as you start to get bigger. Um, yeah. And I'd also do like frankincense and coconut oil and like that, that was just game changer. Like I would put it on multiple times a day. I mean, I don't know if that helped with the stretch marks. I don't have them, but that it helped me like physically not be itching 24 seven. <laughs> okay. That's a good idea. Mixing the essential oils with the coconut oil. I've not yes. done that. Yep. Okay. I love that. Frankincense, lavender, just get it on your belly. <laughs> okay. That's great advice. Um, must have newborn product. Okay. I kind of already mentioned this, but truly like little Z sleep, that newborn course that I bought, like I just love structure and routines. And that helped me to feel confident with like knowing what to do with this child. I think I personally just would have felt so confused with like, when do I feed him? When do I put him down? So yeah, I would recommend that. Like it gave me so much confidence and it's been so cool to see him just like thrive with his little schedule. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I want, I want to check out her course. I really, I've, I've started listening to her podcast and I've gotten so much from it already. Of, even though I'm, I'm just kind of like trying to figure out like, what even is all this sleep yes. stuff? And it's been really helpful. Yeah. She's um, awesome. 
Yeah. Okay. Now for business questions. Um, one, I want to ask you, you're an M shop customer. Yes. This is feels so random in the context of everything we just talked about having nothing to do with business, but I would just love to know what you would say to someone like considering a website template. Oh my gosh. Okay. I could go on and on about this and it's not that random because we're talking about delegating. And that's one of the things that I needed to delegate in my life was my website because I would try to build it all the time, redo it. And I'd be like, okay, it finally looks good. And then I'd be in tears because I'm like, this looks like crap. <laughs> I hate my website. And so when I finally found Elizabeth, bought her template, like I can't believe one, how many compliments I get on my website. Number two, I feel so confident about it, how it looks. Guys, I am not tech savvy, and especially with websites and like coding. I would literally be in tears, like trying to YouTube, like how do I change this color or font? <laughs> and having Elizabeth's course that goes with the template was so helpful. Like I was able to figure it out able to swap out just like my own content, things that I wanted, or even if I wanted to tweak something, I have just been so impressed with it and even show it like their help. Sometimes like something weird has happened and I'll message them and be like, Hey, this link is like breaking. And I don't know why I've like done this, this, and this. And they'll just email me back and be like, Oh, there was something weird going on. We got it taken care of for you. And I'm like, thank you, Jesus. So <laughs> I, yeah, if you are on the fence trying to decide if you should get a template, like it is so worth it. I would pay like times three what I paid for, for Elizabeth's templates. I'm not joking. Like it was that worth it. So yeah. Well, I amazing. love your website and I appreciate all that. And it was so fun for me when you bought one. Cause it was, it felt so random because I don't think we talked about it much beforehand. No, I awesome. think I'd been like, like Oh, Callie just week. bought a template. Like this yeah. is, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. So glad I did. Um, okay. Last, last question is another business one. What's like, you do so many cool things in your business. Um, I guess my question is like, what's your favorite thing about what you get to do for a living? Like your favorite part of it all? I, okay, as cheesy as it sounds, I seriously just love helping people. Like even in this conversation, Elizabeth, like when you have aha moments or clients do where it's like, oh my gosh, like that's so practical. I know what to do or that's going to help me or that's improved my marriage. I, I just love helping people and helping people find freedom in their life because I believe we can have abundance and freedom in everything. And the more self-aware we are, the more you know how to navigate kind of what you're experiencing and your emotions and what's going on. And it's just, it is so life-giving to just see my clients or even getting a message from someone that, you know, heard a podcast episode and they're like, this has literally saved my marriage because we've been implementing this. I love teaching. I love coaching and I love helping people find freedom. Oh, I love that. Oh, you're so great at all those things. That's awesome. Um, okay. I've, I, again, I'm going to listen to my own podcast once this <laughs> airs and like take even more notes and everything, but thank you for sharing and sharing outside of like your normal topic of like Enneagram and, and coaching and all that. Tell everyone where they can find you. I know people want to listen to your podcast, which you have had like the coolest like guest series and everything lately. Like I'm so impressed with it. So tell everyone about the podcast and the other ways they can like work with you and everything. Thank you so much. I, I love my podcast. It's, it's so fun. Yeah. So my podcast is called Living Enneagram, or you can search my name, Callie Ammons. We basically talk about the Enneagram, but also just life personal development things. It's so fun. And then I have a YouTube channel, Callie Ammons. You can find that. There's just so much good free content. So go search both of those platforms. And then I love hanging out on Instagram, which is my name at Callie Ammons or go to CallieAmmons.com. And there's like many courses that I have that have to do with the Enneagram, some free resources. And you can also see just how to work with me over there. Yes. I love all that. And I love that you have a YouTube channel now because you were saying this beforehand, but that's like, because your podcast is very like Enneagram focused yeah, and not as much like personal Cali, but I love that you're doing more personal stuff like over on YouTube. I'm excited to watch your videos. I I'm loving it. I'm like, my husband's so good at YouTube. And so I've been jumping into it. I just feel like there's so much more freedom over there to like record what you want. And I've been like wanting to add to my certifications apart from just the Enneagram too. So it's been really fun to like test that content over there. I'm just like, mm -hmm. Oh, I love, love growing my skills and having a place to teach it. Yeah. I love that. Okay. Well, thank you, Callie, for being here. This has been so much fun. Elizabeth, thank you so much for having me. It was so much fun to talk about something apart from the Enneagram. So I appreciate you. Thank you for listening to this podcast episode all the way until the end. I appreciate you being here. And if you enjoyed this episode, then I want to invite you to check out my website template shop too. 
Over on ElizabethMcCravey.com, you'll find show it website templates that are easy to use, strategically designed and created to help you book more clients and customers. Maybe your current website is really boring. Maybe it's a challenge to update and maybe even it's that thing that you really feel like is just completely holding your business back. Your website needs to be strategically and intentionally designed in order for it to convert your viewers into raving customers. And that's exactly what my M shop templates do. So these are pre-made show it website templates where you can plug and play your content into it with ease and then get started with a website that's designed to actually help you make more money. These templates are designed to be SEO friendly on the back end, and they're not just pretty, but they are very strategic. And with all the strategies I teach on this podcast, and best of all, they're easy for you to set up all by yourself. So shop them at elizabethmccravey.com slash shop and come join the M shop family of hundreds of happy customers. And as an added perk, you can use the code BB podcast at checkout to get 10% off any template as a thank you for being a part of the podcast family. So that's BB podcast for 10% off any template over at elizabethmccravey.com. And if you love this podcast, don't forget that you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts so that you never miss an episode and leave a rating and review for the show wherever you're listening. Share it with a friend, share it on Instagram or Facebook. That's a great way to support the podcast and get the word out. All right, I'll be back next week with another new episode.